everyone, it is Delancey. Welcome back and welcome to my car. I was not expecting to film this video in my car whatsoever, but it's actually pretty comfy and I like the acoustics and uh, the lighting, so I'm just gonna flow with it. So today we're gonna talk school, um, which is a little different from my channel, but this is a video that I've been wanting to make forever, that ever since I started my YouTube channel, and that is just study tips that have really worked for me throughout the years that have helped get me good grades. These are the kind of videos that I personally love to watch, so I finally have made one of my own, and I feel like this has been years in the making. I'm really excited to share this stuff with you guys. Jumping right in, I'm gonna start talking about when you first go to class, so this is before you actually sit down to study, and this is probably the biggest tip that I can give that I think will truly make a difference in your academic career. And that is to show up. I know for me, it's especially surprising in this current degree that I'm pursuing, there's like less than 25% of people in lecture and then everybody comes out for the test and, and it's like, who are all these people? Who are you people? I totally understand. When you're in college, it's very tempting not to come to class. You're not being held accountable anymore. And then on top of that, there are really wonderful, kind professors out there who will upload the entire lecture's PowerPoints. They will upload, you know, audio files. They may even, you know, film the entire lecture and upload it online. And I think a lot of students see that as a get out of jail free card. Oh, it's an excuse. I don't have to come to lecture anymore because it's all online. And I totally get that. I've totally fallen victim to that myself. If you have not been to class, it just creates such a more stressful, high pressure situation. Unless you're somebody who's willing to sit down and watch videos from class every week, you know, that might work for you. But if you're willing to do that and make time for that, then you might as well just make time for lecture and save yourself all of that energy. You know what I mean? If you're physically in class, um, you want to be mentally there as well. You don't want to be online shopping or, you know, doing homework for another class. You want to do your very best to just stay as focused as you can be on the lecturer. It's okay if if you don't fully understand the lecture material right off the bat, I truly think that just being exposed to the material makes a world of a difference. It, this is kind of like a hard concept to explain, but I find that if I have not been mentally present in any of my classes and then I go to sit down and study, it will be like I'm seeing that material for the very first time and that's very stressful. It's so much harder to learn material if you're seeing it for the first time as opposed to seeing something that you may not fully understand, but you've seen it before, you've been exposed to it via the lecture lecture or homework or whatever. It just, for me personally, it makes a huge difference. It's like a domino effect. One builds on top of the other. Just that exposure goes a long way. So you want to put in the work now and be present throughout the semester. So when it comes time to study, you've already done so much of the foundational legwork, if that makes sense. My next tip would be to handwrite your notes. This time and time again has always worked for me the old fashioned way. Pull out a spiral notebook and a pen and just and write your notes in class. I've typed my notes, I've tried to do notes on an iPad, and it works for some people, but just not for me. Some professors, like I said, are really cool and they will upload their PowerPoint slides. I think that is a really great resource. What I like to do, and I know a lot of other students like to do it, is they'll print off the slides ahead of time before lecture. If you wanna save paper, you can print them like double-sided, and then you can also request to have like six slides printed per page, and you just handwrite your notes on the printed slides as you go through the PowerPoint in class, which is really cool. There is a caveat to this though, I and I will say this briefly, that I think some classes are better typed on a computer. They're very rare. Some classes, the professor talks way too fast, so you have to type them in order to get everything down. Or, you know, it's a class where like taking notes is not really that important and it's kind of laissez-faire. So you may just have your computer for that. So you call it as it is. But the general rule of thumb for me, when I handwrite my notes, there's just something magical about it. And I am able to stay much more focused and mentally present as well as retain the information so much more as opposed to just like pressing buttons. So now moving in when it comes actually time to study, the philosophy that I always have in mind is that it is better to know why than simply to memorize. So obviously there are parts of like anatomy and physiology and chemistry where you just gotta memorize things, but overall if you can understand the concepts and the materials, why they are the way that they are, how they're interconnected with one another, I think that makes a huge difference. It's especially helpful when it comes time to write essays if that's on an upcoming test that you have. Plus I think if you are able to understand why certain concepts, certain material is the way that it is, I think you are a little more likely to retain this information after the class, as opposed to just cramming and memorizing it into your short-term memory, you know, you're more likely 
likely, I feel like, to forget that stuff. My next tip would be to determine your ideal study formula. So there are a lot of different components that go into your ideal study setting. What kind of noise volumes are you okay with? You like to study in groups, you like to listen to music, so on and so forth. So kind of like my study success formula would be, you know, I prefer to study alone. I do not do well in groups. I can study in complete silence. I really appreciate the library, but I also can study in like a busy cafe with like, you know, a low grade of white noise. I, I do really like that. Depending on what I'm doing, if I'm just casually studying, I like to listen to music, but if I'm writing something, then I have to have silence. I cannot listen to music in that case. You know, I have found out what works for me, what doesn't, and I just really encourage you to stay mindful of your own likes and dislikes. Find what works for you, find that formula, and you know, repeat it over and over again ad nauseum. Some sub tips I would then like to add would be there is a certain study technique that I absolutely love that is very popular here on YouTube, and that is the Promodoro technique, high intensity interval studying. I think a standard Promodoro session is like two hours long, and you study really hard for 25 minutes, then you take a five minute break where you have to get up from your study space, go elsewhere, and then you come back for another 25 minutes, and then you just continue through those intervals four times. So, yeah, totaling for like two hours. I love it it so much that I actually made my own study with me video where I do the Promodoro technique and I will link that up above. But if not, there are tons of wonderful study accounts out there, awesome people who have made great study with me videos following that technique and I would highly encourage you to go check them out because they are super helpful. Especially if you're like me and you like to study alone but you kind of like to have, you know, an accountability partner but, you know, they're not really there. And then I will also make a note about music. A lot of people like to say they listen to movie soundtracks or classical music and I would agree with that. Um, but a genre that I have really been into lately that, once again, is very popular here in the YouTube community is um, called like lofi or jazz hop, chill hop. It's kind of hard to explain the type of music, but it's definitely on the come up. I feel like more and more people are talking about it, so I will link some links down below to some of those kinds of playlists that you can check out, see if it's for you. There are definitely a few live streaming channels here on YouTube of some really great lofi beats, but there's lots of Spotify playlists out there as well as SoundCloud playlists out there. You know, it's a whole community. I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna link it down below so you can check it out, okay? My next tip is going to be to utilize travel time. Um, if you're biking to classes, if you're walking to classes, taking the bus, or if you're someone like me who is full-on commuting and literally driving like an hour to get to school every day, that is a lot of travel time that you can actually tap into thanks to today's technology and use as study time. As opposed to just listening to music, you know, if, if it's like a day or two before a big test coming up, I will actually opt for listening to podcasts about the subject material that I'm about to be tested on. Even better, not just podcasts, but I will also listen to just the audio of YouTube videos. You would be surprised how many YouTube videos are out there of lectures from anatomy and physiology courses, from English courses, history courses, whatever it may be from universities that you can just pop on and listen to while you're driving. Um, it's like just pop it on Bluetooth, you know, it's absolutely amazing. And obviously the subject matter is not going to be exactly what you are studying, but you know, it gets you in the right mindset. It gets you thinking that way, right? Which I feel like being in the right mindset is, is a huge deal when it comes time for test time. So, um, hello. Yes, my battery died. So I had to go flip that out and some time has passed. So the lighting might look a little different and the setting might have changed. But anyways, moving back into study methods. So I know some people like to make flashcards. Other people like to talk about the material out loud and like teach another person. But over the years, especially in the last three years, what I have found that really works for me time and time again is to make a study guide. And I don't mean to just make a study guide and then use it. The actual act of making the study guide is how I study and how I memorize and learn and understand the information, if that makes sense. I like to get my hands busy and I'm very visual, so I think the study guide that's why it works for me. On top of that, I'm also a very creative person. I love drawing and coloring. I'm very artsy fartsy. So the mindset that I have when I go into making study guides is that 
it's like an art project. Now, obviously you don't want to get caught up in the aesthetics and, and just be focused on that because that's not what it's about. But you know, you want to pull out your colored pencils and your markers and your Sharpies and all that good stuff. And you want to color code it. You want to color things in. You want to take the time to draw really cute diagrams and color them in. You know, it's an art piece. And I think by doing that, it has made the act of studying a little more bearable, especially if I'm going to be like studying all day. If you make it fun, I don't know. It's just, I feel like I can go longer with studying. If you guys want a video where I go more in depth specifically about my study guides and how I structure them, how I go about all of that, let me know and I will make a video solely for that. But the main tip to take away from this video is to try out this method maybe. Um, if you haven't tried it out before, you know, turn your studying into an artsy, fun kind of project. And then my last tip is going to be kind of corny, but it's so important and it's one that I often forget about myself and that is to take care of yourself. It is so important that you take time to take care of your body, which in turn takes care of your brain and you're able to study better. You're going to be a better student if you make the time to care for yourself. Make sure you are eating right, drink enough water, definitely sleep. Oh God, please take time to sleep and also get active. Exercising is so helpful. It has been so helpful for me, especially in the past like four or five years. I have loved exercising, especially if I have like a full day of studying ahead of me. If I just take one hour in my day to just even go for a walk, just a walk even, does so much to help me focus better. I know with certain degrees, especially like if you're going into the medical field, being ambitious, you know, working super hard and sacrificing and sometimes putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation is great and it's necessary at times, but it shouldn't be over glorified where you are killing yourself every day. You need to take care of yourself because if there is nothing left of you, at the end of the day, you know, how can you take care of others and give to others, if that makes sense? Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope one of these tips you can instill into your own academic journey. I absolutely love learning. I love going to school. I'm getting kind of tired of it now because I've just been doing it for so long and I'm ready to get out into the workforce full time. But I do love school. It is such a privilege and an honor to be able to go to school and learn. And so I'm happy I was able to make this video and maybe help you guys in your own academic journeys and make that journey a little more worthwhile. Thank you guys so much. Let me know if there are any future videos you want to see from me that are in this same vein, whether they have to do with school and study tips or, you know, I'm a nutrition student. So anything in that vein down the clinical dietetics path, let me know in the comments down below. And also let me know if you have any like go-to like favorite study tips that you want to share. I am always open to trying out new things and I would love to hear that. So thank you guys again for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.